Any pain in the lower back? Yes, I feel left side, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes? Left side, yes. On the left side? Yes. Okay. Yeah? Left side. Any pain? No, I feel here. Yeah. Now you feel it? Yes. Yes, yes now I feel. You feel it now, yes. okay? Sensitive. We have a very small leg length. One? Uh, or two? I think one. One, okay. And exhale. Inhale. This little device is called a impulse. There we go. Inhale, exhale. There we go. You good? Any pain here? No. Holy. There we go. That's a massive difference. Now you can bend down and touch your toes. Yeah, there we go. All right. What's up, everybody? Dr. Ranian here. Today I'm here with Kurt. Kurt is a professional bodybuilder and personal coach based here in Dubai. Um, yesterday, while doing a hack squat, at the bottom of the squat, he felt a pop in his back and since then has left sided lower back pain. Yesterday was much worse. He was having difficulty in bending forward, moving from seated to standing position, having pain when sneezing. Today, it's there in those same positions, but much better. So we're going to assess him, see what's going on and see what treatment we can provide for him. All right. So we're just going to start off by testing your nervous system. Okay. See everything's working well. Leave your leg loose for me. There we go. Great. Can you cross your fingers for me, please? Pull apart and look up. Just want to see if we can get... There we go. Great. Relax. Okay. As always, we're starting off with our neurologic examination. Can you feel that? Yeah. Same both sides? Yes. Here? Yes. Same. Here? Yes. Here? Yes. Here? Yes. Here? Yes. Here? Yes. Here. Okay, lift your toes for me, please. Hold, don't let me push down. Good. Here, hold, don't let me push down. Good. Bend your toes down for me. Hold, don't let me pull, pull up. Good. This side, hold, don't let me pull up. Good. All right. Let's... Let's get you to straighten your right leg for me. Point your toes towards you. Drop your chin down. Slou drop your chin down. There we go. Slouch forward. Any pain in the lower back or stretching in the leg? Only feel stretching. Only feel stretching. Yeah. Okay, relax for me. Sit up. Straighten your left leg for me. Point your toes towards you. Chin down. Any pain in the lower back? Yes, I feel left side. Yeah. Entire leg or just yeah. in the lower back? Or pelvis. Pelvis, okay. Yeah. Relax for me. Let's get you to stand, please. And face that way. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, guys. Any pain in the lower back? Not now. Yes. And yes? The left side, yes. On the left side. Yes. Okay. Here? Same left side. Feel. Left side, okay. Yeah. Here, left side. Here, Same. left side. Yes. Okay. All right. So we're going to do a test. I'm going to get you to bend forward. As soon as you feel it, you can use the better support. As soon as you feel pain in your lower back, you're going to stop. Okay. Let's get you to bend forward for me. Any pain? Now I feel here. Now you feel it. Yes. Yes. Where about? Yes. Here? Yes. yes. Okay, scan for me. All right. Okay. So I'm just going to mark the lower back. Okay. I want you to bend forward for me and tell me if you still feel the pain, if it's better. Yes, now feel. You feel it now, yes. okay? 
stand for me all right bend forward again is it better now feel again here when have more dumb. more range of motion yes, yes okay stand for me all right if i push on both sides bend forward for me tell me if it goes away completely Any pain? Now here. Feel Just at the bottom. Feel okay, it. you can stand for me. All right. Okay. Okay, guys. So what we just did was a, a standing lumbar passive flexion test. Essentially, I ask Kurt to bend forward first. He needs to use the movement of each vertebra on each other. I then push on the muscle that's supporting the vertebra to see if I can change the pain that he's experiencing. So the first time he bends forward, he gets to about 70 degrees and starts to have pain. When I push on the muscle and he bends forward, he can bend forward further with feeling a little bit less pain. So what we've done is we've given the muscle some support. And what this tells us is that the muscles that are moving each vertebra on the next one may potentially be weaker and that's what's causing him pain when he's moving in a flexed position this is very common when we have patients with disc injuries or lumbar facet syndrome all right in this position do you have any lower back pain no all right leave your leg loose Any pain in the lower back? Okay. Leave your leg loose. Any pain in the lower back? No. No, okay. When I came down, yes. yeah, okay. Sensitive? Yeah. Okay. So in patients with lower back pain, we always want to test the psoas muscle. Sensitive? Yeah. Sensitive? Okay. The psoas muscle is the hip flexor, but its secondary job is to stabilize the lower back. It's commonly injured in patients with lower back pain. Sensitive? Same as the opposite side or more on this side? Same. Here. Okay. Let's get you to turn over onto uh, your belly, please. Yes, please. Face down, yes, please. Let's have a look here. Okay. We have a very small leg length discrepancy, slightly shorter on the right side. Can I get you to raise your leg from your hip on the right side? Yes. Okay, and down. Left side. Okay, and down. All right, so let's have a look here. Any pain when I push on there? Yeah. 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 All right. Any pain when I push on there? When you push here. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Any pain when I push on there? Okay, so what I'm looking for is point tenderness of the spinous process. Where my finger is here is L4. Okay, so please can you tell me which level is most painful? This one? One? Or two? I think one. One. Okay, so point tenderness on the spinous process, in my experience, is often 
um, related to an acute inflammatory process on the disc. Uh, it just so happens that this is the level we marked, which we found improved Kurt's uh, range of motion and lower back pain in the lumbar flexion test. So, as you can see, the more tests you do, the more information you get, the more clear the picture becomes in managing the patient. Any pain there? No. no? Only pressure. Only pressure. Okay. So, I'm not sure if you can see, but if you look at the muscle here, compared to this side, it's much thicker. If you look at that here, you don't see it as hypertonic. Okay. Let's do some muscle testing. <clears throat> All right. Hold your leg for me. You're going to do a hamstring curl, okay? Go. Good. Relax. Relax. The side. Go. Feel a little bit weaker? Uh, only in the hamstring. Only in the hamstring. Okay. Let's test the glute out. Relax. Bend the leg. Bend. Bend. No, no? Yes. Contract and hold. Good. Relax. Bend for me, lift up, hold, not too bad, relax. Okay, so we've assessed Kurt, he has a positive slump test, which is giving him left-sided lower back pain. There's obviously some irritation of the disc and some neural irritation. That's what we use a slump test for, to test sensitivity in the nervous system or any nerve root compression. When I move him to the right side during a CHEMS test, he has pain on the left. When I move him to the left, he has pain on the left. When I bend him to the right side, he has pain on the left. When I bend him to the left side, he has pain on the left. We commonly see this when the disc is very acute. It produces pain on the opposite side of movement or to the opposite side of movement when the entire disc is irritated but irritated more on one particular side in this case the left side so we're going to go ahead do some decompression for the disc we're going to do some deep intramuscular electrostimulation here at l4 a long duration stimulation adjust the sacroiliac joint and then retest cut and see how he's doing Stay tuned, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification button. If you have any questions on lower back pain, please drop them in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. All right, you ready to go, man? Yeah. All right, let's get you to come back for me, please. Okay, perfect. You good there? Can you come back a touch more, slightly more for me? Come back slightly more. Perfect, right there. You good? Okay. Okay, you ready, Kurt? All right. Inhale for me and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale. And exhale and relax.
those of you who are new to the channel, the technique I'm using is called Cox Flexion Distraction Technique. Let's get you to inhale for me and exhale. Keep going. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale and relax. Cox technique is a excellent way to decompress the disc. When we decompress the disc, we encourage the disc to draw in uh, nutrition and it rehydrates the disc. When you have a disc that is irritated or inflamed, it needs more nutrition, more supplementation to heal itself on its own. And that's what we, that's what we do or what we encourage with spinal decompression. Okay, last round. Inhale and exhale. Any pain when I do this? Inhale and exhale. You feel it stretching? Yeah. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Last one, inhale. Leave your back completely loose. Exhale. And relax. This little device is called a impulse adjuster. What it does is it performs the manipulation similar to um, the manipulation you may see in videos or in my videos for that matter, but without having to set the patient up. It also doesn't produce that audible pop or crack that you find when you physically manipulate a patient. The reason why I use it is because I like to layer my therapy. I need to have an effect on the biomechanics of the patient's injury but i also need to have an effect on the neurology of a patient's injury so here what i'm doing is mechanically i'm stimulating healing on the disc and then i'm using the impulse adjuster to produce the same effect as the manipulation and what that's going to do is it's going to fire up the small muscles that are stabilizing the disc and get them to work again encourage them to work it's also going to start giving some input to the nerves that cause pain or are experiencing pain sensitivity and start to get them to calm down. The next thing we'll do is the intramuscular electrostimulation. That's going to do the same effect. And then we'll do the manipulation, which is going to do the same effect. So the more things that we can do, the better it is for the patient's healing response. You good there, Kurt? You following on with me? <laughs> All right. For those that you can see, again, I'll just highlight this area here. You can see it's very hypertonic. Compared to this side, there's some shadow, so it may be difficult to see. But on this side, very soft on this side, you can see the muscle is quite tight and hypertonic. In a case like this, I will not loosen this muscle up. The muscle is tight for a specific reason. It's guarding. Muscle guards when it's trying to protect something. In this case, it's trying to protect the discs. So what I'm going to do is obviously fire those muscles up. Once Kurt's pain subsides and he's, and he's in a better condition, then we'll start to work on loosening up these muscles. If we loosen up these muscles first without stimulating the deeper muscles, we're going to make him too loose and that may affect his stability, which may make the pain worse. And he's here to get better.
Okay, let's get you to hold this in your hand for me, please. Okay, when I start the treatment, you may feel a bit of a shock or shake in your hand, okay? Don't be alarmed, all right? <clears throat> the muscle is very tense. So when I do or when I insert the needle, you may feel a twitch response. It'll be very fast, okay? If it's too strong, let me know. I'll take the needle out. If it's causing you any pain, let me know. I'll take the needle out, all right? All right, let's go. So what I'm stimulating here is called the medial branch of the posterior spinal nerve. As a spinal nerve, walk with me. As the spinal nerve exits the intervertebral foramen here, it bends back and a small branch comes to the surface of the skin. That's what we call the medial branch. So you will see that I do two needles, one at an angle and then one straight down. This is because the nerve is bending backwards and coming to the skin. It supplies pain from, uh, it, or it stimulates or is stimulated by pain from the facet joint and pain from the disc. So I, wanted, I want to stimulate that nerve at its most superficial points to the skin. That allows me to get the most stimuli through it and feedback back to the spinal nerve what I'm, what I'm essentially trying to do is block the pain coming from the joint and from the disc and also trying to fire up these small muscles that are stabilizing that segment. You good, Kurt? Yeah. Too strong? No, 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 no. Sorry. Oh, oh, oh. So we got some thick skin here. There we go. You good? Yeah. Relax your back for me. Maybe tough, I know. So what you saw there was the sensitivity at the level S2. When you have an injury at a particular level, it switches on all the nerves below it. It may even switch off some so switch on sorry. It may even switch on some of the nerves above. So when I inserted the needle here, because all these nerves are switched on, the skin was so sensitive, it caused a guarding reflex, it caused Kurt to kind of guard and protect himself. It's okay, not too strong. All right, great. You're going to relax for me? Are you going to be competing sometime this year? Uh, I'm not sure. I need first to grow 
Oxygen. Yeah. Now I have full rest. Now you are resting. Okay. Yeah. Which category do you compete in? Classic physique, okay. Can you feel that? Yeah, light, mild, or strong? Uh, middle. Light. 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 Now? A little bit more. Okay. It needs to be between light and mild. It shouldn't be strong, okay? Mm -hmm. It's going to run for five minutes. If it becomes too light, let me know. If it becomes too strong, let me know, please. Okay. okay. have a look here so we obviously haven't adjusted Kurt as yet let's have a look to see if we've improved his leg length there we go look at that it's amazing how decompressing the disc and firing up the muscles which stabilize the disc can make such a massive difference in biomechanical function between the lumbar spine and the pelvis and the sacrum Let's get you to raise your right leg for me from your hip. Okay, and down, left leg. Okay, we need to work on that. Can I get you to turn to your side and sit for me, please? Okay. You good? Yeah. All right. Can you straighten your left leg for me, please? Yes. Toes towards you. Toes up towards you. Yes. Chin down. How does it feel in the lower back? Less. Less? Okay. Let's get you to stand for me, please. Okay. You're going to turn and face that way. All right. Let's get you to bend forward. And let me know if you still get that pain in the lower back or if you've been able to bend further with less pain, okay? How's that? A little bit. A little bit. Okay, but that's a much bigger difference in range of motion, right? We'll just drop this again. You can step back a little bit for me, okay? And try go again for me, slowly. There we go. That's a massive difference. Now you can bend down and touch your toes. Yeah, there we go. All right. Slowly up. You good? Yeah. Great. <clears throat> Have you had spinal manipulation before? No? no? First time? No. All right. Great. You're going to take a seat chair for me and then lie on your back. What's your weight? Around 100. Yeah. Okay, Kurt's going to make me work today because 100 is my weight. His weight's 100, so that's 200 kilos of pure muscle. That's going to be... Pure. <laughs> <laughs> Hold for me. There we go. Lift your head for me, please. Oh, let's grab this camera here quick. Uh, microphone quickly. All right, let me move you, okay? Mm. Inhale, exhale, all the way up. There we go. Inhale, exhale. There we go. Drop your head back. Face that way. Inhale, exhale. There we go. How's that? Let's get you to sit for me, please. Okay. Okay. You're going to lie on your side for me. On your right side.
Okay, bring your hips to the edge of the bed for me, please. There we go. Oops, okay. Bend your top leg. You okay? Any pain? It's okay? All right. Okay. Give me this hand. Okay. Place that hand there. Look up for me. Inhale. Exhale. You good? How's that? Good? Yeah? First time, eh? Let's get you to sit for me, please. Yes, there we go. All right. Let's get you to straighten that left leg for me. Point your toes towards you, chin down. How does it feel? Better? But a little bit like Pinching? Okay. Let's get you to stand for me, please. You're going to face that way. All right. Any pain here? Uh, no. no. Any pain here? No. no. Any pain here? No. no. Any pain there? Uh, a little. A little, okay. Any pain here? Yes, okay. All right, you can take a seat for me. Okay, guys, that brings an end to our session today. That is essentially treatment, uh, assessment and treatment of a patient presenting with acute discogenic pain. Um, what we will do is probably manage uh, or monitor cut over the next week or so, uh, maybe see him one or two more times and give him some exercise rehab and then it'll be a progressive return to sport from there. So Kurt, would you like to share with our viewers where they can find you on social media. Yeah, guys, you can find me on Instagram. It's Anton Prost. Welcome. All right. <laughs> we will put in a link for... Why did I keep saying Kurt? Why did I keep saying Kurt? It's Anton. It's Anton. <laughs> this whole video I've been saying Kurt. I think it's because of your surname. Yes. Cr yes. yes. First, first. Oh, anyway, guys. Every time I said Anton in this video, Please replace it. Oh, every time I said cut, please replace it with Anton. My apologies. All right, guys. So, um, please hit the like button, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you soon. Take care.